In this presentation, we will take a look at the payroll adjusting entries for the more complex bookkeeping method, the QuickBooks 2 file. The more complex method is one in which we actually process the payroll within QuickBooks. So you would think there wouldn't be much of an adjusting entry at the end of the time period that we would need from the tax preparer in order to prepare taxes or for financial statements. And there isn't much of an adjusting entry, but there are still some adjustments that may need to be put in place or could be helpful to put in place just to make sure everything ties out. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to open up the QuickBooks file for the more complex QuickBooks file that we've been working on and the trial balance for a more complex type of adjusting entry trial balance in Excel so we can see this process, what might be done at the end of the time period. Remember that this would be done by the tax preparer we would be thinking. However, it's good to know what they are doing to get an idea of the information they may need to do it. We're going to go into the QuickBooks backup file or data files. We're going to open the QB3, QB3 file. And then we will also open up the trial balance that we've put together in Excel. So I've put together a trial balance. So we'll open up the Get Great Guitars in the documents 2019. And we're going to pick up the trial balance and I'm actually going to call it rename it to Q3. So it's going to be adjusting entries trial balance for Q3. That's here it is. So we'll open that up and we'll do the adjusting entry in the trial balance format in Excel because that'll give us an idea of what is going on with it. And then we'll actually enter that into QuickBooks as well. One other report I'm going to open is the employee wages document here. And this actually came from QuickBooks. I'll show you where this came from since we're doing the payroll in QuickBooks and how we might use that in order to make some adjustments for the tax return. Here we are in QuickBooks in the home page. I'm going to open the open windows by going to view and open windows list. Now the QuickBooks, if we enter QuickBooks into the QuickBooks system, no matter what payroll system we use, QuickBooks provides a lot of nice information and reports that we can then use related to payroll. And we could provide some of those reports with the year end documentation, probably want to give it monthly to our clients and yearly so that our uh, tax preparer or the accountant can look at them. Although it gives you all this information, there still be, could be some things that could be broken out for the year end information. So note that we can give then from QuickBooks in reports, reports, and then we have all these payroll summary reports we can use. This one up top summarizing the payroll in Excel is one that's very useful because you can just basically export all the reports right there and uh, then give that to the tax preparer at the end of the year. Also note that we might have reports related to processing the documentation for quarterly payroll and yearly payroll if we were to do this in QuickBooks, and that would be in the employee information. And the, we can look at the payroll forms for the W-2s and the W-3 and the 941s and the 940. And those also might be something that we can provide. So whether we do the payroll ourselves in QuickBooks or a third party does so, it'd be nice to give the tax preparer those documentations, the 941s, the 940s, and then they can kind of just double check that the payroll that we've been reporting to the IRS on payroll taxes ties out to the payroll that we're going to report possibly on uh, the tax return. So if we look at that, then let's take a look at the trial balance that we've gotten from the QuickBooks file here. And here's the trial balance that we have that uh, came from QuickBooks. We've got the loans payable here and we've got the payroll expenses down here. So everything looks like we would think it should look. And we have the payable, it should be tracking the payable, meaning when we withhold the payables and process the payroll, anything that we have not yet paid to the IRS or whoever else we need to pay should then be in this number as a liability. So we would think that would be right there. The only thing that QuickBooks does not do is really break out the payroll uh, for the employee payroll, the payroll expense versus the payroll taxes, which is really the employer payroll taxes. Now, if you just put this number in, it's possible into financial statements or into the tax return. You could do that, but it doesn't exactly tie out to the payroll documentation. So if there is questions and the IRS tried to kind of reconcile those two, it wouldn't tie out exactly. They could probably figure it out, but uh, it, it, there's usually two line items. So the one adjustment you could still do here uh, through the payroll process within QuickBooks is basically make another account here 
called payroll tax expense. I'm just going to insert a row and then we'll call it payroll tax expense. And basically, again, all of the payroll and expense is here. So if we break out just the payroll tax expense portion, that could be helpful. So in other words, here is what was actually paid, the 10766 in wages. And the rest of that that's in our number, which is higher, is payroll tax expense. So let's take a look at that then. This is what we want payroll expense to be. And then we want to put the difference into payroll tax expense is what we're going to do. So this one needs to go down. So I'm going to credit it with a journal entry. I'm going to put it on the bottom and credit it. I'm not going to get too much time on journal entries here, but it's going to go down with a credit. And then we're going to go into the other side of this. And that's going to be to the payroll tax expense. That's going to be the debit. So those are the two accounts we're going to be dealing with. Now the difference, the amounts are going to be this 10,766. That's what we think it should be. So we have in there this 11,534 minus 10,766, I think it was. And that will be it. And that's 768. Let's double check that one more time. 10,766, yeah. So then I'm going to debit and credit for that same amount. And that would basically be our adjustment. And if we did that into the adjusting columns here, we could see exactly what would happen. We would say, okay, this is going to go, payroll expense is going to go down to that 10,766, which we think, okay, that looks right, because that ties out to the W3s here. So that would, you would think that that would be what we want. And then the other side, I'm just going to put here to payroll taxes. And there we have it. And all we did was break this out so that, again, if the IRS looked at it and said, hmm, does that tie out to what you what you gave us with the, with the other forms? And we could say, yeah, that ties out. Well, what about this number? Does it tie? Where does that come from? Uh, well, if we look at the payroll taxes, that's just the employer taxes. And we have a simplified employer taxes where we only have the two taxes here. But most of the employer taxes is always going to be these two, which is we paid, we doubled, and we paid this amount as well. So that's going to be the 614 for Social Security, 154 for Medicare, 768. So there's the 768. So these two, it'll just more, more properly tie out to basically what we reported in the payroll tax reports. Notice there's no effect on net income. All we did was take it out of one expense account and put it into the other. We just kind of put it into the right line item or one line item that might be easier to reconcile from here to the payroll taxes. So if we did that in QuickBooks, then same thing. We'd have QuickBooks reports. We're going to look at the trial balance this time. So we'll go to the uh, account and taxes trial balance dates 010119 to 123119. And then we'll just make this adjusting entry going to company and going to the uh, journal entries company and make journal entries here. <laughs> And then we'll make this as of 1231 into the time period, into the year. And then we'll just enter this, this transaction, which was payroll tax expense, which QuickBooks doesn't have. It doesn't show that. It just groups it all together. Payroll tax expense. And it's possible for us to actually kind of set up an expense in the payroll process for payroll taxes too, but it's a bit more complex. The default for, for QuickBooks is not to break out the expenses between payroll taxes and uh, payroll. So, uh, and that's fine. We can just do this little adjusting entry periodically and that will take care of that. We'll do that at the end of the year. Won't affect net income. No problem. Uh, 768 is the amount. 768. I'm just going to call it ADJ for payroll. Just telling us that this is an adjusting entry. And the other side is payroll expense, ADJ payroll. So same thing, debits and credits, save and close. And then if we go back to our trial balance, we should have that same breakout that would happen here. So again, an accountant that just likes to jump back and forth might take the, the QuickBooks file that we give them, the backup file restored, and just kind of do those adjusting entries here. Or if someone really likes to see it visually, like what actually happens, then they can do it here and you can actually see, okay, that's, I see the connection now on how these change that. 
For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.